A Visit to Cambridge by Firdaus Kanga Cambridge was my metaphor for England and it was strange that when I left it had become altogether something else because I had met Stephen Hawking there it was on a walking tour through Cambridge that the guide mentioned Stephen Hawking poor man who is quite disabled now though he is a worthy successor to Isaac Newton whose chair he has at the university and i started because i had quite forgotten that this most brilliant and completely paralyzed astrophysicist the author of a brief history of time one of the biggest best sellers ever lived here when the walking tour was done i rushed to a phone booth and almost tearing the cord so it could reach me outside phoned stephen hawking's house there was his assistant on the line and i told him i had come in a wheelchair from india perhaps he thought i had propelled myself all the way to write about my travels in britain i had to see professor hawking even 10 minutes would do half an hour he said for 3:30 to 4 and suddenly i felt weak all over growing up disabled you get fed up with people asking you to be brave as if you have a courage account on which you are too lazy to draw a check the only thing that makes you stronger is seeing somebody like you achieving something huge then you know how much is possible and you reach out further than you ever thought you could i haven't been brave said his disembodied computer voice the next morning i've had no choice surely i wanted to say living creatively with the reality of this disintegrating body was a choice but i kept quiet because i felt guilty every time i spoke to him forcing him to respond there he was tapping at the little switch in his hand trying to find the words on his computer with the only bit of movement left to him his long pale fingers every so often his eyes would shut in frustrated exhaustion and sitting opposite him i could feel his anguish the mind buoyed with thoughts that came out in frozen phrases and sentences stiff as corpses a lot of people seem to think that disabled people are chronically unhappy i said i know that's not true myself are you often laughing inside about 3 minutes later he responded I find it amusing when people patronize me. And do you find it annoying when someone like me comes and disturbs you in your work? The answer flashed, yes. Then he smiled his one-way smile and I knew without being sentimental or silly that I was looking at one of the most beautiful men in the world. A first glimpse of him is shocking because he is like a still photograph. as if all those pictures of him in magazines and newspapers have turned three dimensional then you see the head twisted sideways into a slump the torso shrunk inside the pale blue shirt the wasted legs you look at his eyes which can speak still and they are saying something huge and urgent it is hard to tell what but you are shaken because you have seen something you never thought could be seen Before you like a lantern whose walls are worn so thin you glimpse only the light inside is the incandescence of a man the body almost irrelevant exists only like a case made of shadows so that i no believer in eternal souls know that this is what each of us is everything else is an accessory what do you think is the best thing about being disabled I had asked him earlier. I don't think there is anything good about being disabled. I think, I said, you do discover how much kindness there is in the world. Yes, he said. It was a disadvantage of his voice synthesizer that it could convey no inflection, no shades or tone, and I could not tell how enthusiastically he agreed with me. Every time I shifted in my chair or turned my wrist to watch the time, I wanted to make every one of our thirty minutes count. I felt a huge relief and exhilaration in the possibilities of my body. 
how little it mattered then that I would never walk or even stand. I told him how he had been an inspiration beyond cliché for me and surely for others. Did that thought help him? No, he said. And I thought how foolish I was to ask. When your body is a claustrophobic room and the walls are growing narrower day by day, it doesn't do much good to know that there are people outside smiling with admiration to see you breathing still. Is there any advice you can give disabled people? Something that might help make life better? They should concentrate on what they are good at. I think things like the disabled Olympics are a waste of time. I know what you mean. I remembered the years I'd spent trying to play a Spanish guitar considerably larger than I was and how gleefully I had unstringed it one night. The half hour was up. I think I've annoyed you enough, I said, grinning. Thank you for... Stay. I waited. Have some tea. I can show you the garden. The garden was as big as a park, but Stephen Hawking covered every inch, rumbling along in his motorised wheelchair while I dodged to keep out of the way. We couldn't talk very much. The sun made him silent, the letters on his screen disappearing in the glare. An hour later, we were ready to leave. I didn't know what to do. I could not kiss him or cry. I touched his shoulder and wheeled out into the summer evening. I looked back and I knew he was waving, though he wasn't. Watching him, an embodiment of my bravest self, the one I was moving towards, the one I had believed in for so many years alone, I knew that my journey was over, for now. If you like our videos, do share them and subscribe to our channel. If you want awesome quizzes, write to us. Keep watching and keep learning with Walnut.